Welcome along, lady and gentlemen. This is the 2024 Honda Africa Twin. Yeah, the new one with the 19 inch front wheel. This is the Adventure Sport version. So this has the DCT gearbox, the electronic suspension, all the bells and whistles. This is a 17 and a half thousand pound motorcycle there or thereabouts. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking this down to Exeter, which is around about a 350 mile round trip. So this is a proper, proper run on this bike. The forecast is lots of rain. Oh joy. So this is going to be a proper test of this machine. What's this like on a real long trip? It's probably going to be six or seven hours in the saddle today as far as this ride. So uh, buckle yourselves in. If you want to know what this bike is really like on a long adventure, then this is the video for you. So go have a cup of tea, make yourself comfortable and chop soon. Well Here is the beast. She's in full touring mode. I didn't get any panniers from Honda, unfortunately, so I've got my little, another rucksack strapped to the, the luggage rack on the back. I've installed my uh, Pyramid Plastics additional wind deflector on there, because, you know, this is the first time I've ridden this bike, but from experience, I know, being six foot two, you always get a lot of buffeting off a screen, and there's going to be a lot of sort of motorway stuff as part of this video. And it's 11 degrees today, so, uh, We'll see how we get on. We've got the sat nav set up. This bike's, of course, got Apple CarPlay, so I've got the Apple CarPlay set up. But when you've got the Apple CarPlay, you lose a bit of information on the bike. But anyway, let's jump on. So this is the DCT version, and this is only the second time I've ridden a DCT. And this is the same bike, obviously, Greg did the first ride on this. So Greg has done a first ride on this machine. I think it's fair to say he wasn't overly impressed with the DCT. I think DCT is one of those systems whereby if you're a rider which likes to be very in control of the revs of the bike, you know, so you've got to be very particular about how you want your revs of your bike to be, then I don't think you're going to get on with DCT. DCT is sort of a forget what the bike's doing, just let the bike do it, don't worry about what gear it's in, no, just, just let the bike get on with it. Yeah, it may not be your best preference and uh, if you are a rider like that who, who really does like to get you be in the right gear at the right time at every corner then you're probably not going to get on with it even though you've got the sport and the manual options you're probably not going to get on with it and i think the beauty of dct is hopefully we're going to see that today when i'm riding for six hours when you just don't have to worry about changing gear just, just let the bike sort that for you make the journey as easy as possible i think that's what it's about and that's hopefully we're going to see the benefits of that but just riding to that little stop off I get what Greg means, you know, like now I'm in normal drive mode, it's, it's sort of quite labouring on the engine, but don't worry, stop thinking about it and just ride it, I think is, is the answer, but we'll see how we go on with the DCT. This video is not going to be all about DCT. <laughs> it's hard not to talk about the DCT because it's a massive part of this bike. So the whole purpose of me going to Exeter, I've not just plucked that out of the air as a destination. I'm going to see the guys at Hell Performance because for the Hyper Motard project, I'm having a set of their calipers. They do their own billet calipers, absolutely gorgeous. So I said, why don't I come down to you guys? We'll have a little tour of the factory and uh, you know, do a video about what you're doing. Because I, I love supporting British industry. You know, if, if there's a British company that makes fantastic products, let's showcase it. You know, British engineering is fantastic. You know, I think we've lost a bit of that how proud we are about our engineering back britain is a you know an engineering company an energy company an engineering country britain is an engineering marvel you know we've got a massive history of first and engineering so if, if there's a company making motorcycle products premium motorcycle products then i like to sort of showcase what they're doing so british industry oh yes we love a bit of british industry so for 2024 honda have made us some updates know to the Africa twin this there was actually a whole launch for this machine so they saw it not just as a you know a slight revision they actually relaunched this bike and had a proper launch event the big the big talking point I guess with this now is Honda have listened to a lot of customers who said you know don't put a 21 inch I don't want a 21 inch front wheel on my bike when I'm not going to go off-road 
and this is sort of quite a contentious point isn't it because adventure bikes sort of historically uh, have 21 inch front wheels because you know there's, there's this thing you know adventure bikes are used off-road and you know if you just want this is a travel bike so first of all now why does it have to have a 21 inch front wheel if you're only going to be going on the tarmac a smaller front wheel will give the be the, be the bike better agility better road holding you can get wider front tires on a smaller a smaller rim than the big and you know, the big 21 so it makes a lot of sense if you're not going to go off road you don't need a 21 so honda have finally listened and uh, the adventure sports all have 19 inch front wheels now well this is up to upset a lot of the purists of course because some people some crazy fools looking at you richie Vida, like to take their africa twins off road and uh, now if you can, you can still get a 21 inch equipped africa twin but it's the base model the lighter model the, the model without electronic suspension the model which is about 220 kilos this one's 250 kilos fully fueled i think because it's got a 24 litre tank but they, they, if you want to go off road the lighter africa twin now has a 21 and that sort of makes sense to me yeah you've not got all the the creature comforts like the dct electronic suspension but do you want that on the bike you're going to take off road? Surely you want the lighter machine, which is more stripped down, and that's the 21. So that's the way Honda's gone. And I think actually, to me, that decision makes sense. So yeah, that's what they've done. And I think it's a good idea. I'm going to put my hand in here and say, I think it's a good idea. I'm oh, sorry, I wasn't waving at you, Mr. Cyclist. But anyway, I do like the Android Auto, not Apple CarPlay, Android Auto integration on this bike. I think it's fantastic. I mean, if you have an adventure bike when this is set up for it with the dual screens you know these these companies like you know they, they come out with their own apps you have to use like the suzuki's got the my spin the ducati uses the my spin yamaha you're tied in with a garmin subscription what is wrong with that google maps is the best navigation system in the world in my opinion i love google maps you can't beat it you can't beat google maps in my view so why not add Android Auto, Apple CarPlay? It's the, you know, it doesn't cost anything. And this, it comes standard on all the Africa Twins. So I really, really like that. Now, of course, I've got my phone here as well. So I could, uh, I could have my maps running on my phone. And then that would give me, I'd have that screen back for all the information. So I may actually do that later and just have it on my phone, <laughs> on my phone if I'm honest. Because I don't know what gear the bike's in. I don't know how many miles I've done, you know. So I'm already I'm missing a bit of the vital info. I don't know how much fuel I've got left. <laughs> I think you can switch to, you know, the, the normal view, probably at a touch of a button. But there's, there's quite a few buttons on this bike, and I don't know which one it is. Is it that one? That is one thing with the Africa Twin. I mean, it's fine. It's, it's a complex bike. You've got a lot of buttons. And I get it. Once you know the bike, you know it, don't you? But I think it's the most unuser friendly bike on the market in my opinion it's the only bike i jump on and i haven't got a clue how to do stuff you know so that is a little bit of a criticism of this bike but if you buy one you learn it you know what you're doing it's one of those bikes you have to really get the manual out and learn about your bike if i do that oh no that i don't, I don't want peanuts oh god now where am i now i'm in some menu i don't oh oh there we go it does sound absolutely great in spite, I have to say. It's a really fruity sounding engine. You know, it's a, I think it's a 1078cc parallel twin, you know, but it's, it's, it's cross plane and it's got that real sort of sporty, poppy, sort of a bit sort of brappy, a bit supermoto sort of brappy. It's a really nice, really nice power plant. I think it's one of the best parallel twins, this engine. Um, it only makes 100 horsepower you know it's, it's not the it's not the most powerful parallel twin in the business but for 2024 they've eked a bit more torque out of it it's now about another seven percent more torque sort of to the bottom and mid-range which is where you want it isn't it so i think it's 114 114 newton meters now and it's, it's a it's a it's a quick bike yeah, it might only be 100 horsepower, but to be honest, you don't need any more. I know I can't be pulling third gear wheelies like you can on a Super Adventure. I mean, I do love a bike which just wheelies off the power. I just love bikes that do that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a hooligan. And what more can I say? I'm a hooligan, and I love a great big 
powerful machine that just rips your arms out and pulls wheelies everywhere. <laughs> I love that. But, you know, your sensible head, you need no more than this. Oh God, how do we get back to Apple CarPlay? Oh, we're doing some off-road. Oh God, I wish I had the 20 on inch front now. Hold that down. Ah, uh, hold that button down. Uh, uh, enter, I don't, uh, map. Oh, oh, smarter things. I, I don't even know what that is. I don't want smarter things. This is when you're also pleased you don't have panniers to worry about. And you've got to do some filtering. This is why I came on a motorcycle and did not come in the car. And I'm trying to work out, is that a, a Goldwing or is that a BMW in front? I'm edging towards BMW. I'm edging towards BMW. Castle motorcycle. Yeah, it's, it's a Honda. Morning. It's a Honda. A couple of Hondas out on the cruise. Is that an old Goldwing then? Sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, have you? It's very nice. Yeah, it's nice. I'm, I'm liking it. It's a, it's a thumbs up. <laughs> Thought she was telling me off. Oh, now I'm calling somebody. She said she'd just been to see one. So they're thinking of buying one. And I said, it's very good. Yeah, I still don't know how much fuel I've got. I'm a little bit reluctant to, to flip between screens because I'm not... Because annoy. this has got a touch screen, which is brilliant, isn't it? A touch screen. But once you're rolling, this touch screen doesn't work. So, you know, it's this... Uh, sort of the Japanese and their safety features. They, they've, you can't touch the touch screen once you're riding, so you've got to stop to touch the touch screen. I mean, I could do that and touch the screen while I'm riding. I, I get it, I suppose. But again, it's a little... It's little nanny things like that annoying and nanny nanny little things you can't can and can't do you're not allowed to do that you're not allowed to touch the touch screen while you're moving it's like no just let me touch the touch screen if you're going to give me a touch screen i want to be able to touch it there you go we'll go for a bit of a bit of this as well of aggressive filterage motorcycles huh you can't beat them cool. you're thinking of buying one are you yeah just uh went to see it last night oh did you yeah really nice very very nice i have oh, to say this is the new one, yeah. But the old one's just as nice. The old one's just as nice, yeah. Yeah, just as nice. Yeah, it's good. How many miles has this one done then? Only 20. Oh, bloody hell. It's like not even run in. It's not even, don't need a new bike yet. It's not even run in. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> you meet the nicest people on a Honda. So I'm about an hour into the trip, 50 minutes, <laughs> not done much. I've just stopped for emergency supplies and uh, it's trying to rain. I think it is going to rain. I am going to get wet. Just done about 20 miles on the motorway. You know, at the motorway speeds, it's really nice. Have a look at this. So at motorway speeds, it's actually very nice. And I think that little uh, add-on screen is making a big difference to, to the comfort of speed. But I've just been sitting at 80 miles an hour and it's purring along at 80, if I'm honest, very, very comfortably. Another reason I stopped is I realised I forgot to put my earplugs in. And uh, I don't wear earplugs all the time. I should do, really. My hearing is actually suffering because of it. But if I'm on a motorway, and I know I'm going to be on a motorway for ages and ages and ages, I tend to put them in. So I'm going to put my earplugs in. I'm going to finish my coffee. And uh, I'll join you back on the bike in a minute. And I think it's actually just started raining. That's lovely. There it is, for all you non-UK. American viewers, Stonehenge. I think they're 4,000 years old, they reckon. Ah, there we go. Stonehenge, yes. We're at Salisbury sort of area. Is it, is it Salisbury? We're in Wiltshire anyway. I know that much. <laughs> yeah, geography and history never was my strong point. Stone bloody henge. Oh, I've got all the sights on this one. So you can park up here, you can walk for a mile through the mud, or you could just you know, ride or drive past it like that. I know which I'd rather do, and you probably you can't get much more closer to it than that anyway. You can no longer get right up to the stones and chisel bits off and take it home as a souvenir, like I used to be able to. <laughs> yeah, probably for the best. Brilliant thing about an adventure bike, you know, you could stand up just to take a bit of weight off your ass, and I, do, I keep going on about this. But this for me is what is great about adventure bikes, you know, crossover machines, when you're doing long distances. The reason you get a sore, I don't know how comfortable the seat is, if you're sat in the same position, 
for hours on end, you're going to get a sore bum, no matter. So I've just been able to stand up comfortably. I mean, I'm 6'2", I can stand up really comfortably on this. The bars are quite high. It just makes a massive difference to be able to do that. And you'll find you, you'll get much less fatigue, even just to straighten your legs and stuff, you know? And just to take some weight off your bum, even if it's only sort of 30 seconds at a time, makes a big old difference. The 19 inch front definitely does give a little bit more, it definitely makes it a bit more agile. I mean, look at that. Definitely makes it more agile. It definitely gives you a bit more grip from the front because the tyres are slightly well, wider tyres available. And yeah, it, it, it makes sense to me. For what I'd want to use this bike for, the, the 19 makes sense. So well, I, I, if I was buying an Africa Twin, you know, I, I think I'd get the base model. I really, I think the more simpler, lighter base model, for me, I think is the one I'd get. But I'd want the 19 inch wheel <laughs> on the base model. That's the trouble. And I wouldn't want the 21 on the base model. I'd want the 19, because I, I much prefer the 19. So I guess you get, you know, you can't have everything, can you? But I like the, the handling and the feel of the 19, but I like the lightweight, simpler approach of the standard. Africa twin so I want the 19 on the standard one as well please on the <laughs> so we're just coming to a 50 mile an hour speed check area and I've just been sort of thinking while, while sort of platting along this bit of dual carriageway what, what I like about this bike it does speed very well I don't know if it's because of that add-on screen, but I think it's got quite a big frontage. It's nice and wide on this Adventure Sport version, so the air is sort of deflected around you. But I've been sitting at 80 back there in, in real comfort. You know, real, it's, it's one of the best high-speed adventure bikes, I think, this one. It can do distance and speed really easily. And, you know, I've got an hour and ten minutes to go, so I've been going about an hour and a half. My maths is correct. Perfectly comfortable on my body. The seat is really, it's quite, it's not a massively wide seat, but it's an intermediately wide seat, I'd say. It's not really thin, it's thinner at the front, but it's, an, it's wide enough and it's soft enough that so far my ass is, is perfect, you know. And one thing I think about this bike is it's got a 19 inch front now. Thinking back to when I had the, uh, the 21 inch version last year. Just manoeuvring it around, it was a very unwieldy bike because being a 21, it pushes everything higher, doesn't it? And this is definitely easier to manage, easier to push about, it's a bit less intimidating. I mean, it's still a big bike, you know, it's still a big, tall bike, don't get me wrong. And this one's probably 20 kilos heavier than the base version, you know, I, I borrowed last year, so it's heavier. But that, that weight is a little bit lower with the, uh, ooh, which way are we going? Is it this way? Ah. It's a little bit lower with the 19. So, and it's and, and, and even though it has only got a 19, the bike still looks imposing, it still looks big. You know, I, I think the V-Strom, the V-Strom 1000, you know, the non-DE, the RV version, is it the road version? With that, that's got a 19, and it just looks all a little bit small. You know, the DE V-Strom with the 21 looks much more imposing, it's much bigger, it looks, you know, it's got more road presence. But with this, even though it's got a 19, it's still got the road present. I don't know, it, it, because of the design of it, and because I think because of the big frontage, it still looks Im imposing, even with a 19 inch front wheel. And I like that. You, you're, not, you're not sacrificing the looks with the 19 inch front, which I think you do on the V-Strom, if you get the 19 inch front. And uh, it you know, definitely brings benefits to the ride and the grip levels and the feel having a 19 that absolutely does so yeah i think it's you know it's all good <laughs> the 19 on this bike is all good i don't see any visual drawbacks you know and i don't see any well, it's only advantages for road riding obviously going on you can still do gravel lanes with a 19 anyway it's only if you're going to get into a bit more ruttedly technical stuff you really only need a 21 anyway well you can get knobbly 50 50 tires for your 19 if you want so yeah 19 inch front wheels i think is the sensible option for bikes on the road and the africa twin as i say it's 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 all built for for distance it's a brilliant distance bike 
and there was a DCT and the suspension's comfortable, the seat's comfortable, it sits at high speed really easily uh, and I think the 19 just sort of adds into that. You know, the Adventure Sport, but this is a, a 250 kilo bike. Who, who wants to go off-road on a 250 kilo bike? You know, more than just a normal sort of soft-roading on gravel, which this 19 is perfect for, this 19 inch front wheel is perfect for anyway. Who wants to go more technical? <laughs> on a 250 kilo machine not many people a very small percentage of the owners of these bikes again I'm looking at you Richie Vida and Mr Fish <sighs> yeah yeah road works anyway the things this bike doesn't have over its competitors you know there's no adaptive cruise control there's no blind spot detection you know I do like adaptive cruise control I'll take the adaptive I take the adaptive cruise control over the DCT personally, um, but it's it's fine, you know. You only adaptive cruise control. You only realise you really like it till you've had a bike which has got it. If you've never had it, you don't know what you're missing, do you? But once you've had it, going back to standard cruise control is a little bit archaic, but it's fine. I think I'm going to stand up now because I'm getting a, I could start to feel my bottom a little bit now. It's not hurting, but I could feel it, if you know what I mean. So we're half an hour away now. We've got 29 miles to go. And I think we sort of hit, or well we had hit, some nice sort of twisty, flowing road, a decent tarmac to, to sort of test out. Stay there, sir test out this front tire but looks like we missed it looks like that was it <laughs> turn the camera on and then you get straight roads now with the dct <laughs> one more thing about the dct there's like an a here and there's like a, some blobs by the sport i'm wondering if you could tune the gearbox so not just having sport and dynamic but is there a way to tune the gearbox unfortunately I'll have a look under the rear seat in a minute, but when these loan bikes, these press bikes, normally the manufacturers don't give you the manual, which is really annoying. People say, read the manual! It's like, they don't give you the manual because they get lost and they don't have them when they come to sell the bikes on. So I'll see if it has got the manual. Honda sometimes do give you the manual, but there's some sort of... Morning. There's potentially some uh, adjustment, perhaps, on how the DCT operates, maybe how long it... You know, what gear it's in so I don't know it's possible you know I suspect people have been shouting at the screen saying oh you can adjust that you great big fat knobhead so we are uh, three miles away from hell performance the rain has come but it's never really rained it hasn't actually rained it's well it is raining but I've been very very lucky with the weather I think I was expecting much more weather than this now let me give you a wipe after saying that you may be you may be dirty but uh, yeah the Africa twin it's it's impressed me on this trip I think what's impressed me the most is its high-speed capability um, uh, I know they've redone some of the aerodynamics and the frontage on this bike I forgot to mention that they've redesigned the front end slightly and optimized it and I think that's really made a difference I mean I've been doing rather naughtily sort of 85 and it's really easy to sit at 85. I think it's one of the easiest bikes, adventure bikes, to do high speed on. And I know I've got a little add on screen, but I don't think that's making all that difference. You know, 85 on this feels like 70 on a, on a normal adventure bike. I, the BMW, the new GS is also very good at speed, but this is as good as that, but maybe a little bit better than that actually. It's very good at speed. The DCT on this sort of journey is very convenient. <laughs> it's made this trip an absolute breeze. I'm, I'm, I've done three and a half hours. I'm perfectly comfortable. I've stopped once and that was at the beginning. I've done an hour and a half stint without stopping. I can feel my bum, but it's not sore. I'm ready to get off now, to be fair, and have a, you know, have a coffee and a, and a little break you know, if, it's, if I was going on even further. But yeah, it's impressed me. I've done 203 miles on this tank. I think it's it needs fuel soon. <laughs> the fuel light hasn't come on yet, but I'm expecting the fuel light to come on in a minute. 
but yeah it's uh, it's been good I've really enjoyed it what I'll do I will after the credits I'll pop up my final thought you know, just before I get home after traveling back as well and uh, I'll let you know what it's been like to ride sort of six hours on this in a day so if you wait till after the credits that'll pop up and we'll see what the total mileage was and how we found it on the way back as well so hope you enjoyed that thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one cheers guys almost bloody home got about five miles to go I suppose as you can see it's absolutely pitch black the lights on the Africa Twin are absolutely fantastic it's also got uh, cornering lights two stage cornering lights I've noticed so as you go into a corner you can see them just coming on there you get like two stages obviously you get a little bit just to illuminate the corner bear in mind the lights will look rubbish on the GoPro. They don't. The low light isn't great on the GoPro, so it's just going to. You're going to think, what the hell, Josh? What about? That's terrible. Can't see a thing. So it illuminates. There you go. The inside of the corner. Turn them off. I don't blind everybody. Anyway, I'm sure you've all seen the <laughs> cornering, cornering lights. But yeah, I've. Uh, well, I've spent six hours on this bike today, and I feel pretty fresh. I'm a bit nippy now, but. I'm feeling pretty fresh. My ass is still fine. It's got to a point where I can feel it, but it's, it's not got any worse than that. It's not got into that, you know, very painful bump. So the seat, I'd say, is pretty darn uncomfortable. It's a very nice bike. It is a very, very nice bike. And as I sort of said before, I think it's one of those bikes, as, as you more you ride it, the more you love it. And I'm actually really enjoying the DCT now I'm not but that's absolutely fine I'm not uh, dis I'm got used to how it works now and I've actually found it really convenient not to not to have to change gear and stuff and not to have to think about gearboxes so yeah I, I, I'm, I could be turning into a bit of a convert on the DCT I'm sort of 50 50 no illuminated switch gear which is a little bit tricky on this one because you've got so many buttons so I can't have a, I can't have no clue of using any of that really you can do it by feel I can do it just by feel with my thumb but you know if you had big winter gloves on you got you got no chance of knowing what that stuff does I've been uh, thought there was thunder up there oh, now, I've, now, now I've changed the modes now so I've got a feel oh that's the, that's the horn there we go I've been getting, I've done 316 miles in total, and I've been, it's a rat, I've been averaging 46 miles per gallon. So 46, and I've not been hanging around. You know, this thing goes very, very well on the motorway. And I have been, uh, there's another rat. You know, I haven't been hanging around, so 46 miles per gallon. That's not too bad for the sort of consistent motorway speeds I've been doing sort of 80 sometimes 85 you know so I'm not I'm not hanging about on this so I'm getting 46 miles per gallon but yeah I'm uh, I'm loving this thing I'm loving it so if you're interested in Africa Twin I think uh, this new one well I think the old one's great but I think that's the, the updates are, are useful on this and I'm really liking the uh, 19 inch front wheel make it it's made it much more sure-footed I'm loving the new aero and the, the wind protection you've got on this bike heated grips are really hot as well so that is uh, absolutely fantastic so there we go the new Africa twin if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and share and all that jazz and I'll see you on the next one cheers guys